I would like to thank you to thank all the organizers for this event. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't manage uh, to make it in person due to some issues. So therefore, I will give uh, the presentation online about our work. So it's our joint work with uh, Grigory Bukley, who is now a PhD student and grants us uh, Science Institute. And basically, it's about uh, uh, so the title is Orthogonal Decision Trees for Bayesian Experimental Design. But this work is basically about how we can uh, use machine learning methods to optimize uh, the data acquisition process. So, so this is the outline of uh, the presentation. Um, so we will start with with a little with a brief introduction to the problem. So in engineering, uh, we are very interested in solving for inverse problems. So typically we have some data and we have some model parameters. And most of the times uh, we are trying to infer the value of this, of these model parameters from the data that we have. So this data could be seismic, well log, well test, history matching, whatever. Um, so the main issue with the problem engineering uh, <laughs> is that uh, data collection could be very expensive. So seismic is not cheap, but drilling new wells is not cheap as well, and etc. So therefore, if we uh, want to get, so it's very reasonable to plan a, uh, ahead uh, our. Uh, data acquisition process uh, to get uh, maximum information uh, uh, from the measurements that we can get. So because we have severe budget constraints uh, or we don't have much time to take the measurements because, so for example, if we're doing, uh, spending too much time on the well test, then this well is not producing oil and uh, uh, that uh, costs money to the company. So. Uh, any method for optimization of data acquisition process is called experimental design. So if we are trying to optimize the data acquisition system uh, based on probability theory, this is called Bayesian experimental design. So what is Bayesian experimental design? In Bayesian experimental design, you utilize probability th uh, theory uh, to quantify uh, the amount uh, of the information that you uh, get from a single measurement. And then you do some fan uh, fancy mathematics to figure out uh, how you can uh, uh, quantify the average amount uh, of information that you will get uh, with the given experimental setup, uh, which is controlled by the uh, parameter vector Xi. So you have some parameters that control your that determine uh, the experimental setup of your data acquisition system. For example, uh, it could be location of sensors or it, yeah, one of the best examples, the simplest examples is just location of sensors. So, uh, and in uh, Bayesian experimental design, so you have some tools from uh, probability theory to quantify the uh, average amount of information that you get with with a particular design uh, with a particular uh, data acquisition system so and given that you simply can optimize uh, the utility function the expected information gain and the design the the best design will be de de uh, determined uh, by the maximum value of uh, utility function so the main challenge, so uh, the Bayesian experimental design is some sort of uh, well-based uh, uh, from theoretical point of view. So there are lots of uh, study, my theory go, goes uh, uh, like uh, under the hood. But uh, the problem is that uh, the computational cost of uh, calculation of the utility function could be very high. Therefore, uh, in this work, we uh, propose the machine learning approach that can reduce the computational cost for Bayesian uh, experimental design. And this novel approach is called the, the orthogonal decision trees or decision trees with the orthogonality. 
orthogonality constraint. So let's start with a brief introduction to Bayesian experimental design. So we have uh, design parameters xi that control uh, uh, the experimental setup, basically. We have model parameters theta, uh, and we have prior distribution of the model parameters. So we have likelihood, uh, which tells us uh, basically what is the probability to get uh, a, a observation vector y uh, if we have uh, the model parameters theta and uh, design parameters or parameters of our experiment uh, xi. So typically this likelihood is normal distribution and F here is a four model, for example, it could be numerical uh, simulator or I mean flow simulations or whatever. So um, basically uh, F is our model predictions for our predictions based on whatever simulations uh, for observation vector. And if we have uh, prior and likelihood, we can uh, form the joint distribution of observations and model parameters. And then we can compute uh, uh, Bayesian evidence factor simply by integrating uh, over all possible model parameters. So this evidence factor tells you what is the probability of having this uh, vector of observations. And you can form the posterior distribution based on the Bayesian uh, theorem. Uh, which basically uh, tells you what is the probability of uh, for having uh, these model parameters theta if you have observed uh, 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 vector y uh, with your experiment controlled by uh, psi parameters. So uh, basically uh, you can think about it. So you started with the prior distribution and after taking the management, the probability distribution of your model parameters was uh, constrained to the observation vector. So, and uh, the main issue, so uh, first of all, what we can do now, we can compute the KL divergence uh, between uh, posterior distribution and prior distribution. Uh, so this di uh, divergence will tell us uh, how distribution of our model parameters changed after, after we conducted the measurements. So basically, if this change is high, that means that uh, our experiment was informative. If not, uh, if uh, posterior distribution is uh, close to the prior, then our experiment was not very informative. So uh, this is uh, for a single measurement. So we have collected a vector of we have measured uh, vector y, and then we can compute this uh, quantity. So KL divergence, which basically measures the uh, amount of information that we get. Uh, but the problem is that we don't have, in at the stage of uh, planning, uh, of well, in the stage of designing of the experiment, we don't have uh, the vector y. So uh, the solution could be. Uh, to simply to average uh, over all possible observation vectors. So here's what happens basically. Uh, we have the evidence factor that determines uh, the probability distribution for all possible observations based on the Bayesian uh, theorem. And then we simply average uh, the information gained from a single experiment with observations Y over all possible observations. And this is our utility function. So utility functions measure how much information will we get from these particular experiments on average. So in this plot, I would like to comment a little bit. So this uh, plot illustrates the idea of this KL divergence. So we have uh, the blue is uh, pri uh, prior distribution. And uh, let's uh, suppose that uh, we have uh, performed some measurements collected some data and now our posterior distribution uh, changed, become uh, the one uh, that is uh, depicted by the red curve. So on the left hand side, uh, we have not very informative experiment because the prior distribution is wide and posterior distribution is approximately, uh, is similar, it's wide as well. Uh, on the right-hand side, uh, it's an example of uh, 
uh, informative experiment. We have wide uh, posterior, uh, wide prior distribution and narrow posterior distribution. So, and we want, basically we want to design our uh, experimental parameters. So the parameters that control the experiment that we will make in future in such a way that on average, we will have a very narrow uh, posterior distribution. So this is our, this, uh, the target uh, for all the designs we have. So uh, the main issue is that calculation of this quantity is expensive because, because it uh, requires nested MCMC integration. So simply it's very uh, expensive. So, uh, and we can accelerate this process with the machine learning techniques. So in machine learning techniques, in machine learning, in machine learning there is a, let's say, a very popular, very well-known uh, method called decision trees. In this method, you approximate a given function f with a piecewise constant function t, uh, which is called decision tree. And uh, this tree is con uh, constructed uh, uh, sequentially. So you start with the mean value of basically function f uh, uh, on the data that you have for function f. So you simply have a range over all possible observations that you have. So this is your t sub zero. Uh, and then uh, at each step, you somehow uh, add some, uh, you modify basically function uh, t. So you have a sequence of uh, t sub k uh, decision trees of, uh, of sequence of decision trees, basically. Uh, this is basically uh, the one of the ways uh, for writing this. So this delta this is simply the difference between the next one and the previous one. But for some reason, for our, in our work, it's important to write it in this form. So how uh, you construct your approximation? So in your uh, in decision trees. Uh, uh, the domain is divided into several rectangles and uh, at each step uh, when you construct uh, the uh, let's say decision tree at the step t k plus uh, this at the step k plus one you randomly select one of these rectangles let's say this one and then you randomly uh, split it so you can do it several times or one time and at each rectangle, you simply so at each rectangle you have several data points, and basically you can say that the value of uh, uh, your function t here is simply the average over all uh, data points that you have in this rectangle. So, um, and this actually you can prove that. Uh, this corresponds to minimization of the mean squared error uh, on your data. So uh, in our work, we introduce a little modification uh, to this algorithm. Basically, we uh, add orthogonality constraint. So we consider the same decomposition of the decision trees, but what we do, what we're doing actually we force all the increments to be orthogonal to previously constructed trees. Uh, so this meaning, so in the sense of regular L2 norm uh, and the domain where the tree is defined. So how this works? Uh, so let, let's start again. Uh, so we we have already uh, split it, our domain into three rectangles and we want to construct uh, the fourth rectangle. So let's uh, suppose that we decided to split this one. And in the original uh, method, the splitting algorithm will uh, compute uh, the values H1 and H2 simply based uh, as an average value of um, data points uh, in um, rectangle one and rectangle two. Uh, but here we just introduced the orthogonality constraint that means that uh, we uh, so we say that so basically this one this uh, orthogonality constraint for this particular example can be uh, rewrite it as a uh, uh, simple uh, equation uh, 
so that relates h1 and h2 and then so we can for example express h2 as a function of h1 and tune h1 to minimize to minimize overall the mean squared error so the only difference from uh, the previous version of the algorithm from the classical version so in classical version you tune h1 and h2 independently to minimize overall the mean squared error here we do the same thing but uh, with the constraint uh, and this constraint is uh, very important uh, in the context of uh, Bayesian experimental design, where we have to make some numerical integration. Uh, let's let us let me explain it uh, in some details. So let's suppose that we want to approximate the function that depends on two vectors, vector x and vector z. And we know that uh, we will integrate, uh, we will average out uh, over uh, vectors of over all coordinates of vector z. Um, and let's uh, suppose that we constructed this decision tree and when we perform uh, integration over z, this is uh, the same uh, thing as we compute the uh, inner product uh, with the constant function. So therefore, uh, the integration of a Z is, uh, can be considered as simply forgetting the splits. So this is called split, this is called split. Uh, when we divide the domain uh, along the Z direction. So in our expression uh, for the decision tree, uh, we should, uh, forget all splits in Z directions and keep only X, uh, splits in X direction with some weights, which is reflected by this uh, star sign. So uh, that means that after the, that, in when we have our penalty constraint, the integration is very simple. We have just forget some splits, uh, uh, forget the splits in the directions uh, over which we are in making the integration and keep uh, only splits uh, in other directions with, with some weights. So, and this will uh, help us to get very uh, cheap approximation as a sum of piecewise constant functions for uh, our objective function. And we apply this trick to the Bayesian experimental design setup, how we can do it. First of all, we do some, uh, Algebra with the utility function. So we, so this is the definition of our utility function, and then we uh, say that observations uh, are simply model predictions plus noise, and then uh, we can rewrite the likelihoods. So basically, we suppose that our likelihood is normal uh, distribution, and uh, therefore we can uh, end up with this equation. So in this equation, uh, we have uh, the function u, uh, which is averaged out uh, over vector uh, eta and vector uh, theta. So this function u now uh, depends on three, three vectors, theta, xi, and eta, and we would like to integrate average over two of them. And we basically utilize uh, orthogonal decision trees to do that. So we, and we approximate, first of all, we construct the approximation for the utility function as a function of three vectors, and then forget splits at in uh, eta and uh, eta and theta directions. And this will uh, provide us with a good approximation for uh, uh, expected information gain, which are the functions only on xi. Of xi. So let's do, Almost so the 
So we can see that for this particular example, we have pretty good uh, accuracy of integration with orthogonal decision trees. Now we can go for more complicated examples. So let, we studied the analytical example, uh, not analytical, or the example. So it can be solved analytically and there are four unknown parameters here. So what we measure, so X1 and X, so this is basically chemical reaction and X1 and X2 are some concentrations and we measure, so we have some initial value for them and we measure uh, X1 and X2 at six moment of times. And we want to understand where, when it's better to measure X1 and X2 to get the best, uh, or to, to get the highest value of the information about uh, coefficients C1, C2, C3, and C4. So here, uh, some plots of the solutions for this system of equations for random uh, coefficients C1, C2, C3, C4. So we have some realizations and we just, uh, so here is X1, here is X2 at different moment of times. Uh, and this is our information gain. So what is written here? Uh, so the information gain depends on six now variables. Uh, it's six uh, moments of time where we measure uh, the data. Uh, and it is uh, not clear how to visualize the, the function of six variables. So what we do, we have the uh, earliest measurement and the latest measurement. And we suppose that uh, all other, uh, uh, all, other all other four measurements are, uh, so let's say uniformly uh, distributed in this interval. So basically uh, we say that we have uh, T1. So the smallest time, the highest time, and we have uh, equidistant uh, measurements in between uh, the earliest time and the latest time. And uh, so this will uh, give us uh, eventually a function of two variables and you can see uh, the color map. So it tells you that if you measure if you collect measurements lately, so in that region somewhere, then you will not get much information because uh, these curves are not basically very different from each other or, or are similar to each other because, so at least you will not measure some of the parameters because you will have, uh, the curve will become almost constant. Uh, and uh, that means that you will have only two values measured, but you have four parameters. So you will not have very informative uh, measurements. So, and uh, all interesting things uh, happen like at earlier times. Uh, so this, where you have the highest value for um, utility function. Uh, and this is zoomed picture. So here you have the scale from zero to uh, 1,500 and uh, yeah, we zoomed it a little bit, so it's from zero now to uh, six hundred, whatever the uh, time scale is. So, um, yeah, and uh, here's the the blue lines correspond to the optimal location of the sensors if we optimize uh, over all six uh, measurements. So, um, yeah. Um, and this is uh, the example the, related to petroleum engineering. So it's basically, we have uh, two phase uh, flow of incompressible fluids in 1D. So it can be computed analytically or solved numerically, or whatever you prefer. And we have uh, this model for relative phase probabilities. And we suppose that we don't know this uh, uh, numbers, PW and P0, so which the powers basically and we suppose that so it's very some sort of artificial setup for experiment but we suppose that we measure uh the durations of water and oil at uh, some points uh, um, in a fixed moment of time at some uh, points in space so we fix the moment of time where uh, when we ca uh, collect the data and we want to decide where to put sensors to get the maximum information about uh, these two values. 
Um, so, and again, so this function, so now our utility function depends on three uh, numbers, basically coordinates of the sensors. And to visualize it, we, um, we say that uh, we have the sensor on the left, the sensor on the right, and the uh, third sensor is uh, exactly in between them. So in the middle between left and right sensor. So that's why we have only two coordinates now and we can make a heat map. So, uh, and what you can see from this heat map, um, the best, uh, the highest value of information uh, will be achieved uh, when we measure, when we collect the data close to the jump uh, or to the saturation jump. So uh, what uh, are these three uh, lines correspond to? So uh, the first one corresponds to the line when the left sensor hits the region where you have uh, uh, highest variation of saturation. Uh, the next line corresponds to the case where the right sensor hits that region. And the, this line with 45 degrees angle with the axis X uh, corresponds to the case where the middle sensor uh, is in this region. So, but the highest value, so uh, the highest value of information uh, is obtained when you put all sensors in this region. So, because basically we'll have the highest variation of uh, parameters that you measure of situations basically and another thing that's important to notice is that if you put your sensors uh in the regions where uh this so where where the jump has not arrived yet uh then you will get a very low amount of information basically zero uh so from this we can conclude that our model uh provides our approximation, our machine learning model for approximation of Bayesian experimental design of utility function in Bayesian experimental design provide reasonable results in terms of uh, basically experimental setup. So basically I'm done. So it's our con it's concluding remarks, some concluding remarks. Um, so we developed the novel machine learning approach based on orthogonal decision trees and uh, this method can be utilized uh, to perform numerical integration and this method provides uh, reasonable uh, accuracy for the tasks. Um, and this method can be applied to um, weight and experimental design, at least we tested it on some simple problems um, to approximate the expected information gain as a utility function that will tell us uh, what is the best uh, experimental setup to collect the data. So, and now we are looking for application of our algorithm to more complicated examples. But it, the best case would be, of course, uh, real data examples, real fields. Uh, but in any case, any... Uh, uh, any a good example will be appreciated. So we are open for discussion, for collaboration. Uh, if you have uh, such tasks as uh, optimization of data acquisition process. So uh, thank you for attention.